The Batman has taken over the world since this past week. It has become a critical darling, a fan favorite, and a massive box office hit. So to hold this out until the next one comes, this is my fan casting of The Batman 2. Now before I get started with my The Batman 2 fan casting, I want to hear what you think of it. Let me know which direction you take the story, who do you cast, in what role, why they fit into your story. And as always, these videos are just for fun. It's for us to discuss ideas and where we'd like to see this story go next i have done a couple of these before i did the fan casting for the mcu fantastic four for the mcu x-men and also i have a ton of the batman videos i did a spoiler free review a spoiler review i did a ranking of every theatrical batman movie and you can find them up in this playlist right here and of course if you like movies and tv this is the place to be, so consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss any future conversation on your favorite movies, TV, and The Batman. Last disclaimer, I promise, I'm going to talk about The Batman as if we've seen it. We need to establish what happened in that film to talk about these ideas for The Batman 2. So this is your spoiler warning, you are warned. And as we see Batman having this story of becoming, coming from this vigilante who's just making his way through criminals, punching them, demolishing them, he finds a higher purpose by the end of that film. So now I want to explore that in the Batman 2, both on the Batman side and on the Bruce Wayne side. Also, we know that Matt Reeves wants to take this story into the no man's land storyline which obviously takes massive adaptation since in the comics that is a bat family event but as we see where the first the batman ends up he's very much on his way to his version of no man's land so the setting is that after the events of the batman in this new movie, which I'm tentatively calling The Batman No Man's Land, I want to see the United States getting ready to pass a bill that will make Gotham City no longer a part of the country, and someone who's trying to make that bill not pass is the new DA that the city needs, Harvey Dent. Now we have seen Harvey Dent in films before, but I want to establish this Harvey Dent as this hopeful bright light for the city that is a very old friend of Bruce. I want him to be the antithesis of Bruce Wayne, someone who has always been hopeful, someone who has always done as much as he can for the city, and I want to cast Jamie Dornan. I also really like the idea of John David Washington, so either of these I will take. I just like the idea of Jamie Dornan, who kind of looks slightly similar in a certain way from a certain point of view to Robert Pattinson. And he is kind of everything that Bruce Wayne now wishes to become, having learned the lessons, having gone through the journey that Bruce did in the first The Batman. I want this Bruce as he's trying to do more for the city, as he's trying to carry on the family legacy and make sure his father's work keeps going. He's inspired by Harvey Dent, what he has been doing all these years and what he has been doing now. And Harvey Dent, on the other hand, he is inspired by the Batman and how the Batman is keeping crime at a low rate and all the help he did for the city during the Riddler attacks in the first film. I just really like this full circle kind of thing where Bruce is inspired by Harvey, Harvey is inspired by Batman, and Bruce is trying to balance the two sides, the duality of who he is and trying to do as much as he can for the city of Gotham. And as I said, Harvey Dent in this film, he's trying to stop this bill that will make Gotham City no longer a part of the United States, will make it 
no man's land. He's trying to stop it from happening. So it will allow us to explore this character a lot. The pressures that come with the job. But with his admiration for Batman, we will also see that friendship from the comics between Gordon, Harvey, and Batman. And this three-way dance of each of them in, in their own realm of reality, helping the city as much as they can, but we also get to explore Harvey a lot more. Now, caveat, ideally, how I'm setting this up, I'm actually seeing this grand story as four movies, not three. But those two other movies are a conversation for another video. And so as Harvey is doing all that, Bruce is being inspired by him and he begins to be more involved in the running of Wayne Enterprises. And in the science division, there's this scientist called Victor Freeze. Now, I'm taking this beat, or at least the setup of this beat, of this character, similar to how we met Edward Nigma in Batman Forever. Not going there in terms of tone, I just like the idea that this guy at one point works for Bruce Wayne. And for Victor Freeze, if you know me, if you know the channel, you know what I'm about to say, I'm casting Michael Fassbender as Mr. Freeze. I want this guy to be a scientist at Wayne Enterprises who's trying to come up with this cure to cure his wife and all that and Bruce doesn't like it because of his methods. And I love the contrast that it creates as Bruce has finally accepted the legacy of his family. He is inadvertently stopping a man from having a family to begin with, from having a legacy to carry on to begin with. I also like the idea that Freeze is slightly older than Bruce to the point that he could have been a friend, an employee already of Thomas Wayne, a very bright young scientist at the time that Thomas was running Wayne Enterprises, and now he looks down to Bruce as a veteran himself. And so I see Bruce Wayne eventually firing Victor because of his methods and as the bill is passed and Gotham is no longer a part of the United States, laws are just up in the air and Victor sees an opportunity to finally revive his wife and since there are no laws getting in his way anymore, he goes down the criminal path to do so. Speaking of criminal path, in the Batman, with the death, or at least supposed death, of Carmine Falcone, we are left with a power vacuum that clearly Oswald Cobblepot, the Penguin, is trying to take over. But, with the corruption revealed by the Riddler throughout the entire first film about Gotham's most important political figures and supposed figures of justice, they're arrests are no longer valid and so I see Sal Maroney getting out of prison and he's the other criminal that is going to fight neck and neck against Oswald for control of the criminal underworld of Gotham and I think we need a powerful actor for this role so I am casting Stanley Tucci as Sal Maroney in this film. I know we saw quick pictures of Maroney in the Batman but honestly, I, I really think Stanley is a shoe in for this role. I think he'd do a great job. And I really want to see criminals fight for control against one another. And I don't think we need two big supervillains from the Batman Rogues Gallery. I think we need a villain. That's the Penguin that's already there. And we need one of the ground level, street level, more normal quote-unquote characters from the Batman lore and I think it'd be really interesting to see the Penguin taking over from Carmine Falcone against Sal Maroni who was put in jail in the first place due to Falcone's help. And at this point I've introduced every new character that I want to introduce in this film, at least characters that we see the face of. But I want to keep going with the fantastic world building that Matt Reeves laid the groundwork for in his first film. So, as we left Riddler alive by the end of the last film, and we now have Bruce Wayne getting more involved with his father's work with his company, 
I think we need Bruce to start figuring out that there's a bigger conspiracy that he realizes with his family and with Gotham as a whole. Those easter eggs about Hush, about Edward Elliot, about Martha Wayne being an Arkham, big change there, those are not just random. Those are seeds planted and I think as Bruce starts to get more involved, he'll find out through documents, through pictures, these different ciphers, these strange masked people in old pictures throughout the most important events and around the most important people in the history of Gotham and will start to peel the veils and the layers to uncover the court of owls. Bruce notices their presence throughout his family's history even before the marriage of his parents, two of the most powerful families in Gotham's history, and he believes the Riddler to know the answer. So I see the Riddler in this trilogy having this kind of calendar man role, where he's in jail, but he's always useful to the Batman's investigation, and this way we keep having the detective Batman on screen. One more thing. I said earlier that I see this direction as four movies, not three. So in some way, I would also like to start implementing the seeds to reveal the League of Shadows in the future. Not in this film, but in the third one, where eventually we see a big war of Batman joining the League of Shadows against the Court of All. Again, not in this film. But the world building and the setup for that can make its presence felt here. And so I'm giving you one extra, one surprise fan casting that I think if the scripts for the next movies are as good as they were for The Batman, we can have a Raj al Ghul played by a returning actor from retirement, the greatest actor of all time that I think would be such a great fit for Raz, Daniel they Lewis. Now, I know Daniel Day Lewis is an old man. He's not going to be in a ton of action sequences. He can get around that, really. I, I don't think there's anything really standing in the way if we really could, if we really wanted to. And this is a fan casting, so imagination is the only limitation. So, to me, I would love to see that in this The Batman franchise. So, going back a little bit. My fan cast for Harvey Dent is Jamie Dornan. Again, I do love the John David Washington choice. My fan casting for Mr. Freeze, Victor Freeze, is Michael Fassbender. And my fan cast for Sal Maroney is Stanley Tucci. And of course, last but not least, we don't see any member of the Court of Owls. At least we don't see their face, but we see their presence. So we can leave Talon and all of them for the other film. But last but not least... Daniel De Lewis as Razal Go. But those are only my thoughts. That's only the direction I would go in with the Batman 2, given that we don't know anything at this point besides Matt Reeves wants to do No Man's Land. However you do it, I don't know, but this is how I'd do it. But I want to hear what you do with this sequel. What is your fan casting? Anything and everything down there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my channel members, Bruna and Stuart for making this video possible and remember to check out all those the Batman related videos that are now up on the channel as well as the reviews for the Dark Knight trilogy that I did ahead of the film and I'll be back with many more videos very soon and so until then love each other and love the movies